Well, a bed and breakfast is usually about relaxation, but a zoning request to open one in the historic Tampa Heights neighborhood is causing nothing but tension. Our Brendan McLaughlin is following the controversy for us tonight. Brendan? Hey, Jameson, I didn't find anybody opposed to warm scones or handmade bed quilts, but there is widespread suspicion that the man trying to open the bed and breakfast has something else in mind. The century-old Victorian on East Oak Street seems a proper setting for a bed and breakfast. All it needs is a rezoning approval. If we're a true bread and bed and breakfast, it'd have probably a positive enhancement. Uh, as a uh, flop house, it's definitely negative. Like Chris Curry and his wife Vicky, who own the adjacent lot, believe it's going to be a flop house because of the owner, realtor Mike Aradak. Why don't you take Mr. Aradak at his word? Well, I'd like to, but I've seen some of the, the past history of some of his properties. We've seen one, too. The boarding house had numerous fire code violations. This last February, the fire marshal evicted 25 of Aradak's tenants from a warehouse in Ybor City because of unsafe conditions. Aradak claimed he was helping people, but code inspectors called it an illegal rooming house. Most of the people evicted were indigent and needed taxpayer assistance to resettle. Aradak refused an on-camera interview. In an email, he said he will not turn his building into a rooming house, but refused to answer any questions about what he is planning. In full disclosure, I live just a few blocks from the house in question, and I can tell you that people in this neighborhood take a lot of pride in having reduced crime and restored a lot of historic houses. They're very sensitive to anything that might reverse that progress. One of the uh, concerns is just the criminal activity that takes place with a boarding house. Jim Hartnett with the Tampa Heights Civic Association says the group will oppose Aradak's zoning petition, claiming it's a misuse of the rules. Not only in Tampa Heights, but this is kind of an end around for the whole city that I think should be addressed. In city codes, the difference between a rooming house and a bed and breakfast that can have as many as 12 units in a single house is subtle. There's not a requirement that you serve breakfast. Tom Snelling, right, director of planning and development, is familiar with Mike Aradak's history, but says city council cannot take that into account when considering the application in October. We will only consider the application as is presented to us and all the facts of this individual specific case. Brenda McLaughlin, ABC Action News.